Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and this is a kit that you can use to build a trough. Now we've covered troughs in previous videos. If you don't know what a trough is or does, they are a parabolic collector that works on a linear basis that allows you to heat up a pipe that you run water through or air. The nice thing about troughs is that they don't necessarily need tracking for the sun on a, day, uh, on a daily basis. You set them up on an annual basis where the sun is and because they're in a linear path with the sun, they pretty much stay on target. You can add tracking to them, but it's not 100% necessary if your target has a tolerance. In previous videos, I showed you how to make a trough, and it's pretty complicated. This is a kit that someone sent me. I'm going to have information on where you can get it. It is extremely simple to put together, and it actually, this trough is designed to do 24-inch piece of material, which is what we've covered in videos with the uh, metal, the stainless steel sheets, by 48 inches long, which is 8 square feet of sunlight that you collect down to less than a 1-inch area, which is pretty effective. This trough kit has everything that you need, pretty much, and it's a pretty ingenious way of putting it together. This kit has been machined, and the core of the kit is actually a piece of one and a quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. The trough rails slide on there. They fit on there. You put them in. And we'll put this one here. There's three. They are one foot apart. So they fit on there snugly, and what you end up with is something that looks like this. Now the end pieces are a little bit longer, and they slide on as well. That is the basic skeleton of it. Now it's pretty flimsy at this point. Not much you could do with this because everything goes different directions. That's where these end pieces and these rails come in. Get it as flush as you can and you've got these holes and you add a wood screw and I put one on the other side right now you can see that the trough has some structure to it there are holes that go down the side here you put two screws here you want to make sure you're nice and straight make sure we're in You want this top part to be flush. You don't want it to stick up above. You want it to be nice and flush. You're going to do that for all of them all the way down. Next what I'm going to do is cover this with some aluminized tape. This is a metal tape. The inner parts of troughs during the morning and evening time can catch the sunlight. Since this is made out of wood, it can burn that area. This reflects most of the sunlight away to the edges and it works really well. I'm going to just rough cut this part. We're going to cover the whole thing as nicely as we can. I'll have information on where you can get all of this stuff. This particular reflective tape does not work well for parabolic dishes because it's a dull, true aluminum. And it's not, it's shiny, but it doesn't have a good mirrored surface to it. So now that we have that, all you do is rub it down and then flip it over. Take an X-Acto knife and carefully, you wanna go with The marks on this that way you don't lift the tape up I'm gonna keep this inner part in here together because the sunlight could actually get up under the wood there so you have a pretty much a solid good shield the troughs during the a.m. and p.m. don't produce enough heat to actually burn this stuff they will have enough to burn the wood you helping hmm? watch out for this 
This stuff, by the way, can give you a nasty cut because it's true metal. So unlike me, wear gloves. What are you doing? Hold the wrench for me. Hold that wrench. Hold that wrench. So now that everything's put together, you have a very solid parabolic trough that all you have to do is drop your material down in. And this is stainless steel. You can see it fits nicely in there. And when you flex it, it fits in there perfectly and you have yourself a parabolic trough. This is the dull side, by the way. The mirrored side is under this. So this material is actually on the rigid side to put it together. You don't have to use the stainless. In my opinion, it works the best and lasts the longest outside. This is a perfect 24 inch piece of material and this trough fits it perfectly to what we need. So you would have to drill these down to get them to lock into place. So what I've done is I've got myself a piece of 50 inch acrylic by whatever the width is. It's more than what we need. So we need to cut this down. Now there's a lot of ways of cutting acrylic. I showed you in previous videos. You can run it through your saw a few times, raising the blade a little bit each time. We did a perfect circle video uh, showing you that. Another way is to take your saw blade off, flip it around, run your acrylic through there. Another method is to buy a proper saw blade for it. Easiest method though, is this little device that I made that I'm gonna be probably having on our website this is an acrylic cutter. What you do is you mount your rulers down. I just have two clamps here and you make a few passes right along that cut line. What it does, as you cut more and more, the blade heats up and you actually get these little strips of acrylic that come off. You come to the edge of the table and you just give it a little bit of a split to start it. Work it down, and your acrylic comes right off. So I'm going to cut the length on this to exactly 24 inches. Usually eight or nine passes does it. And this is what you end up with is semi-melted acrylic shavings. Some of them are nice and stringy. What happens is the blade heats up just from the friction and as it drags into there it actually melts it and it's all got to do with the cut that I put on that blade with a special piece of equipment. So there's the score line that we just put and all you have to do is give it a little bit of just a little bit there and then once you start the end you just simply work it and your acrylic falls off. The nice thing about this, you get a beautiful edge and you don't have any waste. A blade will take away some of your acrylic. With this particular blade, you can actually do very, very fine pieces of acrylic and make strips, which acrylic cutting companies probably won't be able to give you. But now we have a piece of acrylic. This was a scrap piece. I'm gonna clean it up. So we have our acrylic material and we've got our cutaway piece which we can use for another project. By the way, this blade is one of the things that I've been considering getting a patent on. Just, it's easy to cut acrylic. This one actually probably done a couple hundred sheets with it. It actually opened up a new line of business for us, believe it or not. We'll get to that in a later video. For now, I'm going to clean this. This product right here is true orange peel. You can buy this at most stores. What you want to do, you want to make sure this works great for cleaning acrylic. It gets like 
grime and stuff off, greasy. You can actually clean an engine with this. It's pure citrus spray. You don't want to get it on any soft tissue, um, your hair, your eyes. It will burn the crap out of you, but it is just pure orange. You don't want to spray this on certain types of plastic that will melt. Um, this will this doesn't melt acrylic, but it does melt other types of plastic, like uh, cassette tapes, certain types of computer equipment. Denise, it's actually an air freshener. Denise used it, and uh, my scanner, which used to have a nice shiny surface, now has this ugly matte surface. But for acrylic and for metals and just about anything, that stuff is amazing and it's all natural. It's pure orange peel oil. So we need to get this as clean as possible. The reason I'm doing that is that stuff cuts sticky adhesives. If you ever get a cup that you can't get the label off the bottom, that stuff will get it off. Similar to the orange goop you buy, but that is true 100% pure orange oil there. So now, To attack oily residue, this stuff you get at the dollar store. It is called Totally Awesome, and for a buck, this stuff will clean anything. These two together, I have degreased engines with this, and you hardly use any. It works amazing. It's the best combination solution. You don't want to get this on anything under a car that will, the plastic might get eaten or discolored. So. You want to focus where you spray that. This stuff's pretty good. Don't get this on aluminum. This stuff will oxidize aluminum right away. But for acrylic, they work great. So we have ourselves a nice, nice surface. Flexes in there perfectly. Fits like a glove. So what I'm going to do now is mount this to this and then use the part A and part B material. The reason you want to do it first versus putting it on while it's flat, when you bend adhesive materials, you change the structures a little bit and you tend to flex them on the inside. So it's better to have a curved surface and then put your tape on. That way the tape can form to it versus putting your tape on and then forcing it in. This with clear acrylic will also allow you to see where to put your drill holes so you can drill them in properly. There's special acrylic drill bits you can buy. I'm using a regular drill bit. I'm going to show you a little trick on doing that. What you want to do is get it started and you want to put very light pressure. Go fast and don't put any weight on it. Once you start grabbing a little acrylic, you want to reverse it. And what that does is it melts the acrylic. Just kind of go back and forth. And you go through without creating any problems. You want to use a screw with a flat head underneath. These type of screws, they are going to just dig into your acrylic and crack it. So this is the type of screws that you want. They actually have a flat head to them underneath. These, um, you want to make sure your drill hole's big enough. You want to go down into the wood, right down the center, because this screw is going to actually go into the PVC pipe. you have your hole dug. And you don't want to tighten it too much because that's where you're going to crack your acrylic. So those two are holding it in place. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these in. And we're going to pre-drill into our wood too. That way we line it up perfectly and we do two things at the same time. You don't want to over tighten it there so it's a good idea once you get it in come in with the screwdriver and just hand tighten it I actually had a little crack here so this is one of the drawbacks of working with acrylic you can see I went too tight with the screw there and I started a crack this crack would run forever what I did was I headed it off with a small drill hole right in front of it I left a little sp space there once the drill hole went through the crack met but that ends it 
you can put some uh, tape on the back. I'm going to go ahead and put some strapping tape. That'll hold it there. Once the film's in place, it'll also give it some structure along there. This is our Part A mirror film. And what you do is you want to go ahead and start with a nice straight edge and use your ruler for your width. Two inch pieces, which is the perfect width of your standard uh, metal ruler that you're going to find, work perfect. It seems if you go wider, you tend to get a little bit more bubbles. Um, narrower just takes forever. So I'm cutting on a cardboard surface. That prevents your blade from dulling. A lot of people cut on hard surfaces and they end up snapping tons of these off. This will give me a more sturdy surface to work on. That takes the rock out of it. That's what you're looking for right there. I've removed the screws down one row. And then we can come in and you can see where the holes are. And go ahead and clean that out a little bit and that'll allow you the ability. Once it starts to grab so we don't crack it. So this is the trough that I completed in about two hours. Um, the mirrored film part took about an hour to do. A few little bubbles, a couple little things that's just from dust. Pretty easy to do. Once you get going, you get better at it. Good idea not to keep repositioning it. Um, but this looks really good. Not bad considering that the other one that I had took me a uh, whole day to do. This was... The kit was nothing to put together. I had it together in less than maybe 10 minutes. Uh, if I would have used the metal, would have been a lot faster, but this worked good. You can go over this with the part B now if you want for an additional to bump the mirror up a little bit. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.